Let's start with a pillow under the tummy. Do some inspiratory muscle training. And we're hoping for, uh, it, it can be a flexible pillow. A bolster will be a little bit uh, more invasive, but nothing horrible. But we'd like it to fit in between the top of the pelvic crest and the base of the rib cage. So I'm wanting it somewhere in that area. It can overlap a little bit, but kind of fitting like that. So this, kind, this uh, shape of pillow is perfect. Or as I say, a yoga bolster is fine too. You can also fold up a Mexican blanket uh, six or seven times and you'll get, you'll get something close as well. <clears throat> so inhaling and exhaling through the nose. So the intention is the first thing that moves when you inhale is touching the pillow. And you breathe into the pillow in your imagination. Physiologically, obviously the lungs aren't down there, but this is about the diaphragm. And the intention on the exhalation is to let the pillow, bolster, or blanket help push your exhalation out to exhale more air. So we're working on combating life's effects on our respiratory system, making us breathe less too fast through our mouth, etc. So we're inhaling and exhaling through our nose power inhalation, pressing into the pillow because it makes breathing harder and that's the whole point. And then exhale, relax every muscle in your body as best you can and let that air whoosh out.
So with this <clears throat> exercise, we do it in two sections. The first active breathing to wake everything up, and then we do passive breathing. So this is the restorative part of it. Let your body breathe you, drift off and let the pillow do the work for two minutes.
And coming up, pull the pillow out, lie back flat on your tummy, breathe and see what you notice. To me, it feels like my diaphragm has turned from a page to an empress. More space, bigger movement. All right, so now let's use it. Come on up. To all fours, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, cat twist, sigh through the mouth. Inhale up, other side. Inhale up, other side. Inhale. Exhale, back and forth. Continue on. Let that exhale drift for a little while. Inhale. Wait four heartbeats at the end of every exhalation. Happy puppy, one arm forward. We don't need nearly as many of the happy puppies as we do of the cat twist for most people. Two more. Downward dog, use the exhale to launch yourself into dog. Go for a little bicycle ride. Inhale. Exhale into upward dog. Wiggle, shoulder blades. And come up onto our backs. Left leg on the floor, right leg straight up in the air. Grabbing the leg. So hands behind the leg, interlace the fingers the opposite way of the way you naturally did. And notice for a moment how flexible those hamstrings feel. How, how close to your chest are you able to get that knee? 
So with singing, we often lock our legs and tight hamstrings will affect through our pelvic floor, our high notes. Ding, ding, ding. So we're gonna work on the hamstrings a little bit. If you can't get your hands behind your legs, you can always grab your pant leg from the front, but more effective if you can grab around the back. Press through both heels, pull the leg away, resist with the hands. So you're pulling the hands in, pushing the hamstring away. Breathing. Breathing low, about 40% of your strength and release. Now pull that leg in a little closer. Look at that. And pull and resist. Breathe low. You can feel your pelvic floor breathing good. And release, pull that leg in a little closer. Get a little closer and leg tries to escape, hands resist. 40% of your strength, press through both heels. And release and pull it in again. Press through the heels and one more. Leg escapes, hands say nope. Soft jaw, soft neck, soft gaze. Press through both heels and release. Pull that leg in a little bit. Cool, eh? All right, legs flat and check out the difference between the two legs. Now, of course, I don't want you walking around in circles all day. So other leg, clasp hands behind, clasp, it, clasp the hands in the non-intuitive way. So reverse it, press through both heels, notice the hamstring, notice how close it'll come to the chest. And then 40% leg away from the chest, Hands resisting, jaw soft, breathing low. Keep pressing through the both heels. The heels tend to want to go to sleep because we're focusing so much on the hands and hams. And release, pull the leg in, any movement. And you can also judge by the ceiling, right? Where those toes are placed on the ceiling. And again, this is especially good if we're doing a little too much sitting, which most of us are doing these days. Press through the heel and release, pull leg in, check it out. And again, 40% of your strength, resist with the hands. Soft shoulders, soft eyes, soft jaw. And release. In again, straighten, heels, go. And release. Check out the mobility. This is almost more a mobility exercise than a flexibility exercise. Although we are getting that in the hands as well. And legs flat. 
Then hug your knees into your chest. Stretch out that lower back. Lengthen the neck, shoulder blades down the back. And feet down, exhale to the side, come on up. To all fours and then tuck the toes under and sit on the feet. Stretch out those feet, probably the part of the body that gets the most use. This one can be a little loud. Shoulder blades down the back, neck lengthened. Whilst keeping those toes stretching, let's clasp the hands behind the back. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, raise the arms away from the tailbone. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, arms up. Squeeze the shoulder blades, hands up. Squeeze the shoulder blades, hands up. Have you forgotten about the toes yet? Probably not. And release the hands and come off the toes. And back to all fours. Cat twist, happy puppy, downward dog, upward dog again, this time with humming. So this stimulates the vagus nerve. Good for singers placement. And because we're moving, it will naturally help bring the voice into a better position. Inhale. Cat twist, hum. Mm. Inhale up, cat twist hum. So taking stock of where that hum is sitting uh, and, it's, and the quality of the hum, is it bumpy, is it cracky? Uh, both of those probably mean it's not quite connected to the air, sitting too far back, etc. So the idea is as we repeat, that eventually that hum just flows out of you. <clears throat> Mine's a little stuck because I just woke up. Oh, sorry, as a yogi, I think I'm supposed to tell you I was up at six meditating for two hours. Yeah, I wasn't. Anyway, continuing on, cat twist, inhale. <sighs> And let that air and support pressure change the pitch of the hum. We're trying to embody our hum here. And let that hum go for an obnoxiously long time, longer than you think it can. Continuing on, on your own, one more minute.
Does it feel like your hum is connected to your pelvic floor? And then happy puppy. Inhale up. Wiggling the bum a little bit, working the hum into your body or working your body into the hum. Fully embody the sound. So you're moving the sound with your body. You're moving the body with the sound. You're moving through the sound. You're moving in the sound. There's a sense of fullness available. And downward dog. And remember, we want that breath and hum to happen just before we move. So it feels like, like this. Like the hum and the breath are launching me into downward dog. It feels like downward dog is four times as easy when we get it. It's not effort, it's a launch. And then inhale, exhale, upward dog. Sexy mermaid, working the shoulders back and forth, still humming. One more down to up dog on your own. Use the hum to launch. Sometimes this tickles so much we end up sneezing and that's okay. Are the movement and the voice one? That is literally what we're after. All right, back onto our backs. Crossing the legs, crossing the knees, I should say. <clears throat> so legs are bent, feet on the floor, cross the knee. And on a ha vowel, Take the knees over to the left. Ah. Inhale up. Feel the inhale lifting the legs. Ah. Feel the energy filling the hips as you inhale. Ah. 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 Back and forth. Ah. 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 
see if all of a sudden your ha lasts longer. Keep going on your own. Ah, uh, couple more. And coming to center, D pretzel, and cross the legs the other way. You know the drill, same thing, back and forth. Ah, the ha feels like a release, like a, like a whoosh, like a surrender. And come to center. Roll over onto your side. Come on back up to all fours. And you guessed it. Now that we've created, hopefully, a safe vessel for the voice by doing all the breath and humming work. Vowels. Cat twist. Hey. Like so. Inhale up. And continue back and forth as long a hay as you can. Wiggle as you do it. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Move that sound through the body. The sound surrounds you you're inside your sound. You're inside your sound.
And <coughs> coming up, cat twist, or sorry, happy puppy, he. He. Stretch through the sound. Play back and forth between head and chest voice if you want. Notice if one of your registers is freer than the other. Notice if one of the registers is freer than the other. Wiggle that voice into an open area, into an open space. And then coming back to center. So now we're graduating from folk songs to Mozart because now we're going against gravity. So here's where we start to do core work by activating the breath so that we're not tightening that six pack. So that's where the launch comes in. Oh, let your hoe launch your body. And let that wiggle around, bend your knees, go for a little bike ride, wiggle around, wiggle that tailbone, wiggle the shoulders. And then inhale through the nose. Ah, into upward dog. Ah, and wiggle the shoulders. You'll find there's more air there than you think if you wiggle those shoulders. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Ah. And then back into down dog, launch. Oh. Ah. And come up and come to standing. Just make a couple of sounds. Ah, hey, he, and notice how you feel. How's the posture feel despite not having worked on posture? What do we notice about the breathing cycle? If we make a sound like, hey, how much of your body is involved in the hey? How much of your body is resonating? Hey. Oh. Can you feel your hands resonate? as you phonate? Can you feel your feet resonate as you phonate? So just taking stock, noticing. Have some water if you please. And bouncer.
So bouncing from your knees, letting the shoulders bounce as much as possible. Now letting the jaw bounce as much as possible. Bounce that sound into your pelvic floor. Are your hands free to bounce? Now let your head bounce as much as possible. Try a different vowel, still bouncing, bounce a little quicker. Bounce the shoulders, bounce the jaw, let the head go. Almost there. And come to stillness and notice. What's the feeling? What's the sense? How do the hands feel? <clears throat> How does your sense of your personal power feel? Clasp the hands behind the back. Squeeze the shoulder blades together using those mid traps. Lift the hands away from the tailbone. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, lift the hands. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, lift the hands. Squeeze, lift, squeeze, lift. I think I'll turn that into a bumper sticker. That's good advice for life, really. Squeeze and lift. Actually, I don't know if it is. And squeeze and lift, squeeze and lift, and let go. And shake it out a little bit, give yourself a hug. And then reverse the hug. Come to the front of the mat. Toes and heels, same distance apart. Feet a couple of inches apart. So in a moment, we're going to take the right foot back, legs length, on a ha. So we often have a sense of, it's very subtle, but a sense of unsuredness and trepidation as we take that leg back or we look back as we do it. I want us to trust that that part of the earth is back there even though we can't see it and drive that leg back with a ha like this if you want to take a look. Ha. And maybe go like a half an inch farther than you might usually. And no pausing, just go for it. Inhale. <sighs> Feet parallel, inhale up through the nose, arms up, exhale, ha, into warrior one. <sighs> Shoulder blades down the back, chest up, Ribs in, arms up, shoulder blades down the back. 
hands awake, especially from the, the bouncer. The bouncer has helped us get into warrior. They help each other. Inhale through the nose, drop the hands. Ha yourself into standing. Ha. So we're learning to connect our voice to our core. That's what this is. Amongst other things. Other side. Inhale. Ha. Inhale. Ha. Shoulder blades down the back. Arms up, hands awake, facing each other. Front knee a little bit towards the little toe side. Back heel down, tailbone down, front of the body up. <clears throat> Shoulder blades down, arms up. That's a tricky one, isn't it? Shoulder blades down, arms up. Back heel down, breathing low. Inhale. Ha. Bounce again, just for a moment. Ha, 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 ha. And standing. Hey your right foot up into your hand, and I'll show you. Again, Tadasana position. Hey! Grab hold of that back foot. If not possible, you can grab onto a pant leg. And if you need an arm out to the side because there's a, a breeze in your living room right now, that's totally fine. Front kneecap down, front of the body up, shoulder blades down, inhale, ha or ho yourself into dancer. Oh, reaching up, breathing, keep that. See, another th reason that we use the voice is not for the voice's sake, it's for breath's sake. So the voice helps us realize that we're actually breathing. So we notice that our voice goes, ah, it's a lot more obvious that there's something going on with our breathing. Shall I keep talking while we're in this position or would you like to come out? I can give you a dissertation on Fry Manuel Cardoso, if you want. Inhale. Ha. Ah, come down. That was my master's degree composer, in case you're wondering. And it wasn't totally random, although pretty random. Inhale. Ha. Ah, other side. Quadricep down, front of the body up, shoulder blades down. Noticing the balance, is it different between the two sides? Often it will be. Hand out if you need it. Inhale, try a hey, see what that does. Hey. So feeling like the voice is actually giving direction to your pose. Is your voice strengthening your pose? Can you feel the voice increasing awareness of the pose?
This is cellular level that we're looking for. Uh, challenge the pose a little bit. Up with that arm. Up with that leg. Inhale. Uh, come out. A little bit of bouncer. Let everything go, shake out the hands. And inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward bend. You can grab hold of your elbows or have your hands on the floor if they come. Knees slightly bent, neck soft, head down. Inhale, hey yourself down to sitting. And grab your blanket and he yourself down to lying flat on your back. If you feel like hugging your knees into your chest or doing any little, little stretches on the way in, that's totally fine. Otherwise, on your back and feeling the floor. Checking out your breathing. What's happening down there? Is there a chance that we can feel our pelvic floor drop down? on each inhalation. And even more amazing, can we feel it release back up on each exhalation? Is the breath different? Does it feel like the cells of your body are vibrating differently? Energy levels. Feeling the face soften downwards. Jaw soft. Eyes release into the sockets. Ears melt. Temples soften. Jaw joint, let's go. Cheekbones release. Tummy, let's go.
wiggling the toes and fingers, <clears throat> stretching out the legs and the arms. Roll over to the side and give yourselves a big hug. A big hug just for taking time for you. Inhale, exhale, roll yourself up to sitting. And thank you.